Agencies has, have been working for years to institute strong IT governance strategies that lead to savings and better performing IT systems. The Department of Veterans Affairs has been continually tweaking its plan. Martha Orr is Deputy Chief Information Officer for Quality Performance and Risk at the VA. Marissa Larson is Executive Director for Quality and Risk at the Department. Ladies, welcome to you both. Thank you. Martha, Martha good morning. Martha, the term IT governance is one of those terms that has been around for a long time, but nobody really knows what it means. Can you define it for us? IT governance would be, in at least in our context, uh, the methodology that we use for decision making within the Office of Information and Technology at the Department of Veterans Affairs. It is a collaborative teaming environment uh, across all organizations within um, OIT where we come together, we discuss issues, um, we make recommendations and decisions. So IT governance requires everyone in the office to participate, you know, with the VA being so dispersed across the country. Has it been challenging for management to convince people spread nationwide to participate? Um, I would say that yes, um, it has been a journey in that regard. Um, we have had a lot of effort and um, streamlining and process work that we've put forth. We've tweaked our processes and sometimes we've gone back actually and redone some of our processes to make them more easy and more acceptable to our organization. Um, but I think in the end, we have hit on a formula that we feel is leading us to successful governance within our organization. And Marissa, let me bring you in. How does governance structure play into acquisition at the VA? Great, thank you for the question. Um, I think first and foremost, governance um, here within the Office of Information Technology, um, to Martha's point, is, is really a part of our culture. It's part of our day-to-day -day operations. And so we've really embraced this framework, um, ensuring that everyone has an opportunity to be included. And so specifically with acquisitions, um, we have an acquisition um, strategy review where we ensure that all of our strategies are aligning to our acquisitions so that we can validate that we are harnessing every dollar and ensuring that we are providing the best services for our veterans. And Martha, much of you know, IT governance has its roots in what's called the Federal Information Technology Acquisition Reform Act. Long name. Uh, what is that law, and how has the VA complied with that with that law? Well, we uh, spent a lot of time uh, making sure that we were in compliance with FATARA, and we have all of our approval activities for uh, to your earlier point to our acquisitions um, actually now coming through our governance process, and um, uh, we have approvals within the Office of Information and Technology, but also we do IT procurements outside of uh, the Office of Information and Technology as well. And we've harnessed those to come into our governance process and our approval process so that the uh, Chief Information Officer has a full view of all IT acquisitions in the department. Any challenges though, um, Martha, with acquisition in particular? Well, I think anytime you introduce a new process, a new way of doing business, there are challenges. And I mentioned earlier that we had a few, um, some lessons learned from earlier uh, processes that we implemented. We made some changes to our uh, governance structure, to our uh, councils and committees. Um, just a, a real quick and easy example is, you know, we, we um, at the beginning had adhered to the full set of uh, Robert's uh, rules of engagement. We, um, we kind of uh, made those into Bob's rules now so that we still have, um, you know, a clear approval process, a clear um, ability to capture decisions and motions and those sorts of things, but we've sort of opened the aperture a bit so that we can have more collaboration and teamwork as we go through. Uh, so just, you know, anytime you have to, you have to work with uh, the process, you have to work with the people that are in the process, but I think, I think it's safe to say by now, we have a good buy-in within the Office of Information and Technology to the governance framework, 
but we're constantly tweaking it, changing it, and improving it as well. So Marissa, when COVID hit last year, everyone practically started working from home. How did that affect your IT enterprise? So I, I think we were able to, you know, quickly respond to the pandemic and to COVID-19. And actually we were able to do this um, very expeditiously through our governance framework. So we actually established a specific COVID-19 council um, which was able to, you know, properly review, adjudicate, and make decisions um, as it came to all of our COVID decision making, um, and it really led us to a very repeatable, defendable um, process for the organization. And Martha, how has that worked in terms of when you bring together those IT experts for decision making purposes? How did that work out? Well, uh, if if you're talking about how did it work out uh, when we w since we've been in the pandemic, I, I have to say I was a bit surprised. You know, we went from the old sitting around the table making decision decisions methodology into a you know 100% remote and virtual methodology, and I was actually quite surprised um, how well we were able to continue to conduct business while we were all on video cameras and not sitting in a room. I did not notice um, any, any decline in participation. Uh, we were able to keep the cadence going for the last year and a half. Uh, we continued to have our governance meetings as usual, decisions made, minutes put out, and you know, work moving forward. All right, well, thank you very much, ladies, for both of you for joining us and being on the program. Thank you so much. Happy to be here.